Gather your people, merciful God. Gather the longing, the lost and unsure. Gather your people, merciful God. Name us and claim us as yours. Surely you alone can save us. You pay our price with precious blood. Reaching through your great compassion, you lift up your people with love. Gather your people, merciful God. Gather the longing, the lost and unsure. Gather your people, merciful God. Name us and claim us as yours. Surely you alone uphold us. You give us strength for all our needs. Shielding with the Father's favor, you bless us with pardon and peace. Gather your people, merciful God. Gather the longing, the lost and unsure. Gather your people, merciful God. Name us and claim us as yours. Our merciful God does indeed gather us in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lent is a call to action, a time for pruning, a time to cut away the unwanted negative thoughts and misdeeds that keep us from loving God and loving our neighbor as we should. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Thank you so much for gathering here this afternoon as we continue this Lenten journey with a real deep and profound recognition that we're quickly coming to the conclusion of this season of preparation, this time of prayer and fasting and almsgiving. And I don't know about you, but it's really been a, a, a great opportunity for me to take a look at my life and to really do a great assessment of this, this spiritual journey that we've all been on together as we've been walking this faith journey uh, and placing ourselves deeper in the presence of God, uh, I've been asking uh, the, myself the question of what have I been able to do to turn my heart over to God more profoundly this season? There have been some great answers that have come my way, and then there have been times of great silence and struggle as well. And so I think as we come together today, as those who believe in the mercy and the love of God, we pause for a moment to prepare ourselves for whatever answers God has in store for us today in this celebration. We do so because we know that we need to open our hearts because we've sinned this past week. And so we ask for God's forgiveness as we open our hearts and ask forgiveness for those sins that have offended our Creator and, and ask forgiveness at this time for those sins that have separated ourselves from Him. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy, have mercy on us, 
Lord, have mercy, have mercy on us. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, author of every mercy and of all goodness, who in fasting, prayer, and almsgiving have shown us a remedy for sin, Look graciously on this confession of our lowliness, that we who are bowed down by our conscience may always be lifted up by your mercy. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. In those days, in their thirst for water, the people grumbled against Moses, saying, Why did you ever make us leave Egypt? Was it just to have us die here of thirst with our children and our livestock? So Moses cried out to the Lord, What shall I do with these people? A little more, and they will stone me. The Lord answered Moses, Go over there in front of the people, along with some of the elders of Israel, holding in your hand as you go the staff with which you struck the river. I will be standing there in front of you on the rock in Horeb. Strike the rock, and the water will flow from it for the people to drink. This Moses did in the presence of the elders of Israel. The place was called Massa and Meribah because the Israelites quarreled there and tested the Lord, saying, Is the Lord in our midst or not? The word of the Lord. Our responsorial psalm is number 75, The Lord is Kind and Merciful, number 75. The Lord is kind and merciful, the Lord is kind and merciful. The Lord is kind and merciful. The Lord is kind and merciful. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all my being. Bless God's name. Bless the Lord and forget not God's benefits. The Lord is kind and merciful. The Lord is kind and merciful. God pardons all your iniquities and comforts your sorrows, redeems your life from destruction, and crowns you with kindness. The Lord is kind and merciful. The Lord is kind and merciful. Merciful, merciful and gracious is our God. Slow to anger, abounding in kindness. The Lord is kind and merciful. The Lord is kind and merciful. A 
reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith to this grace in which we stand, and we boast in hope of the glory of the God. And hope does not disappoint, because the love of God has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. For Christ, while we were still helpless, died at the appointed time for the ungodly. Indeed, only with difficulty does one die for a just person, though perhaps for a good person one might even find the courage to die. But God proves his love for us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. The word of the Lord. From the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Some people told Jesus about the Galileans, whose blood Pilate had mingled with the blood of their sacrifices. Jesus said to them in reply, Do you think that because these Galileans suffered in this way, they were greater sinners than other Galileans? By no means. But I tell you, if you do not repent, you will all perish as they did. Or those 18 people who were killed when the Tower of Siloam fell on them, do you think they were more guilty than everyone else who lived in Jerusalem? By no means. But I tell you, if you do not repent, you will all perish as they did. And he told them this parable. There once was a person who had a fig tree planted in his orchard, and when he came in search of fruit on it, but found none, he said to the gardener, For three years now I have come in search of fruit on this fig tree, but have found none. So cut it down. Why should it exist, the, exhaust the soil? He said to him in reply, Sir, leave it for this year also, and I shall cultivate the ground around it and fertilize it. It may bear fruit in the future. If not, you can cut it down. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, we continue to hear and be nourished by the beautiful readings of the book of, uh, through, the, through the Exodus experience of the Israelite people who are continually challenging Moses and experiencing the trials and the tribulation of their time in the desert, their desert experience, which is one of great challenge. And today we, in our first reading, we hear about the difficulties that they're facing, meeting their most basic of needs. Today they're challenged by meeting their most basic of needs, and the one thing that they yearn for the most is water. Water. If only they had water to drink, and Moses, leading them out into the middle of nowhere, finds himself on the brink of being almost 
destroyed himself by the people who are preparing to rise up against him. He finds himself in big trouble. For he knows that the people could no longer stand for this much longer. They no longer can tolerate being led around without having these basic needs met. And so he calls upon his just God. And he asks him, please provide for our need. Provide for our need. We know that we have lacked in faith. We know that we have not always been faithful in trusting to you in our journeys, but we trust that you will meet our needs. And once again, God in his beneficence, in God's generosity, says, yes, I shall. Even in the face of great adversity, Time and again, God gives that divine yes. And so the people are able to drink once again as Moses is able to free that water from Meribah, right? He's able to use that staff and touches the stone as the water pours forth from that stone in Meribah and the people are able to drink freely once again. From the waters that had not flown, that had not flown from that area before. What an incredible story this has been, and it touches our hearts right where we are at on our Lenten journey today. For many of us, thirst and hunger for those most basic of needs during this Lenten season in particular on those days of great fasting, on those days of Wednesday, sometimes for some of us, and in particular on Friday where we're all called to give up some sort of sacrifice. I don't know about you, but it usually creeps in about midday on Friday where I really start to wonder why I'm Catholic. this whole fasting thing, right? But nonetheless, we've committed ourselves to this, and soon, soon two o'clock rolls around, and all of a sudden it's like, okay, I've got this, right? This isn't too bad. And then four o'clock rolls around, and you're ready to pretty much sell your soul for a piece of meat, right? McDonald's is looking good. Those McChickens even look good, don't they? Or whatever they have there. And the fish filet, right? Whatever those are made out of. God only knows. But, <laughs> you know, we, we have... It's, uh, it's a good Friday in Lent. It's a Friday in Lent. We have drastic measures we have to take, right? But nonetheless, we look to these, these moments of... Uh, of great desperation as the Israelite people did in our time of need. And we couldn't help but turn to our God in our moments of weakness. And I, all joking aside, we know that in our, in our spiritual lives, there are, there are a great number of moments where we find ourselves uh, weak in our faith. There are opportunities that God gives us time and again for us to be able to grow and to be able to nourish ourselves. And that's really what Lent is about. It gives us an opportunity for us to be able to challenge one another and to be able to challenge ourselves. To be able to say, yeah, you know, I, I really haven't maybe invested as much time as I should be in my spiritual self-care. You know, I'm, I'm concerned about other things, and I occupy my day well with other things, but you know what? Lent really needs to be about me. It really needs to be about me. In my prayer, in my fasting, in the way in which I give, 
It needs to be about how well I can care for myself and my relationship with God. Because really, it, it becomes very clear to the servant, the, the servant who, uh, who serves alongside of Christ that we become drastically ineffective if we're not willing to recognize our own needs first that if we're not going to recognize our own weaknesses and failures, that in order for us to serve others, it, becomes, it would become impossible for us to do so well if we don't recognize our own needs first. And so in order to become a good and strong and faithful servant, who walks alongside Jesus and trusts in the mission that he has placed in front of each of us, we must work tirelessly to make sure that we strive with that profound amount of zeal in our heart to carry us forward and to trust that God will allow us to always bear great fruit in the work that he has given to each of us. What a blessing it is for the Israelite people to have finally been nourished by that water of life that came into their lives. Let us pray today about what that looks like for each of us. Let us ask ourselves what is going to nourish us this week? What is going to give us the strength to continue on in our own journey of faith? What do I need to nourish me so that I may continue to be a good servant of Christ and joyfully share the gospel message with others so that they may come to know the love of God in a profound way and that the world may be transformed by the message of the good news that I carry within my own heart? and have the opportunity to profess our faith together as we say, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. indeed kind and merciful, let us bring to our God the needs of all people in our world. Hear our prayer, hear our prayer, God of mercy, hear our prayer, hear
the members of God's holy church, may we, through the power of the Holy Spirit, persevere in bringing Christ's light to the world. For those who hold positions of leadership, that the Lord's gracious mercy may bear great fruit in their lives of service. <clears throat> For those who are grieving the loss of a loved one, may they know the peace, love, and comfort of the Lord. For the members of this community, especially those preparing for the Easter sacraments, that our words and deeds proclaim God's forgiveness. For babies in the womb and people on death row, that their lives be respected and spared. For all who have died, especially for those who died this past week, Teresa Nelson, Evie Portier, Roman Schneider, and Angeline Nancy Huck. And for those remembered at this Mass, Louise Tessner and Ray Tessner. And for all of our own personal petitions, we pray. Hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. God hear our prayer. And each in Sunday in this Lent, we will pray as a parish for the purification of the church in reparation for the scandals that continue to plague her. And so as we continue to conclude our intercessions today, please take a holy card now at the end of your pew and join together in our closing prayer. Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ, priest, priest and victim, we come before you, laden, laden with, with the sins, sins and betrayals of our priests and bishops. We will be singing number 644, There's a Wideness in God's Mercy, number 644. Why? 
will you scatter like a crowd of frightened sheep foolish hearts why will you wander from a love so true and deep there is welcome for the sinner and more graces for the good there is mercy with the savior there is healing in his blood that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. For our good. Be pleased, O Lord, with these sacrificial offerings, and grant that we who beseech pardon for our own sins may take care to forgive our neighbor, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for you will that your, our self-denial should give you thanks, humble our sinful pride, contribute to the feeding of the poor, and so help us imitate you in your kindness. And so we glorify you with countless angels, as with one voice of praise we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full, are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes, who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. For at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you in a similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, 
as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Jerome, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, St. Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And we are not into temptation, but deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Worthy. 
told me they don't wear it. the homily today, I challenged uh, all of us to kind of grow in, in new ways and, and maybe to discover uh, some of the challenges that the Lord may be placing in front of you and ways for you to grow in your faith. And uh, I think that the, uh, the image that Jesus gives us today in our gospel reading of the, the fig tree fits really well with that. And uh, the tree that uh, the landowner visits and time and again it's not bearing good fruit and uh, the landowner just becomes so frustrated uh, with it that he just wants it torn up and, and burnt up. He just it's useless until that compassionate voice of the one who has been spending the most time with the tree, the one who is really working the land and there all the time um, is able to see it for its good fruits and says, well, let's give it another year. Let's give it another year. I'll tend the land around it. I'll work with it. I'll be patient with it. And uh, let's just give it another year. And so, you know what? If your Lent isn't shaping up to being what, it, what you had hoped it would be, uh, just know that the Lord is patient with you and that the Lord is waiting still uh, for whatever, uh, whatever you can give him no matter what point you're at in your spiritual life, uh, the Lord is always there, ready, willing, and able to walk with you uh, and, and is joyfully there greeting you and, uh, and is glad that you're here today. So we thank you for your presence among us. Just a few quick announcements that I'd like to share with you before we go our separate ways. Our parish mission... Uh, with Adam's story will begin on March 30th through April 2nd uh, or Monday, April 1st in the morning. All the sessions will be here at Holy Family Church. Please check your bulletin or website for more details. Um, if you wouldn't mind, we're, we've been praying a, a lot of prayers for the success of our mission. There should be a prayer card at the end of your pew, um, not the one we prayed at the end of the petitions, but a different one. For our mission prayer, if you wouldn't mind praying that along with me at this time as we pray together. Jesus, you came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. Send your Holy Spirit and inflame our hearts with love for you. Bless our upcoming parish mission that through it we may deeply know your love for us and more perfectly share that love with each other. The, again, uh, just a quick commercial for the mission. Uh, if you haven't gone to one before, I just want to invite you, please consider attending. Uh, they're wonderful events, and uh, they really are meant to enliven the, the hearts of all the parish community, and we just invite you to be a part of them uh, and get involved. It's really a great experience. You can come. Uh, one night or all if you can, whatever works best for you. So we just want you to be a part of them. And Adam, Adam's story is a great, uh, great public speaker, uh, is well known around uh, Catholic circles, so you, you won't be uh, disappointed there. With the uh, recent flooding in parts of our community, we want to remind all of you that if you were facing any type of hardships, um, if you know of anyone facing any type of hardships, either financial or spiritual, uh, please do not hesitate to reach out to Holy Family. We want to help in any way that is possible for us to help. 
So please contact the Holy Family Office if you are in need. We do have some financial resources available to um, our parishioners that we would like to be able to provide for those who are in need. And so um, we, we would like to share those with those who maybe are struggling. So if you know of somebody, um, please do not hesitate to reach out to Aaron Cobb or um, to somebody here on our staff, and we will try to work with them to uh, get the financial help that they need. Also, a word of special thanks to all of our parishioners who have been volunteering and making a difference, uh, assisting those friends, neighbors, those in the community during this crisis. We thank you for living out your Christian mission and for the great work that you've been doing, working alongside all of the, uh, the uh, public workers and those who have given up their time to make sure that uh, we're taking care of our neighbors well. Sunday, uh, the 7 p.m. Mass um, is going to be canceled March 31st. The 7 p.m. Mass at, at Sacred Heart is going to be canceled due to our parish mission. And so just making sure everyone is aware of that. And then also, finally, tonight's Lent information session is Eucharist. God is with us. Meet us in Holy Family Hall at 7 p.m. The session, uh, I believe, tonight is going to be led by Deacon Ricardo, so it's uh, surely going to be an exciting one. I'm sure uh, uh, he'll he'll definitely give a great presentation on that. I talked to him this week, and he's looking forward to it. So this is going to uh, be our weekly Lenten series um, on that. So please see your bulletin if you have any questions on that. And that is all. It's a lot of announcements. Yeah, I would say that's plenty. Do you have any for the congregation? No? How about our servers? Do you guys have anything to add? No? All right, they're bored. They're ready to go home. Do you guys have plans afterwards? No? All right. You just want to get out of the sun. Well, let us all please stand and pray. As we receive the pledge of things yet hidden in heaven, and are nourished while still on earth with the bread that comes down from on high, we humbly entreat you, O Lord, that what is being brought about in us in mystery may come to true completion through Christ our Lord. Amen. It was this guy's first mass serving, by the way. He's the first, uh, first serving uh, tonight. So he did it without any training, too. How about a round of applause? Pretty good. <laughs> He's got his big brother over there giving him instructions, so he did a nice job. So thank you. Thanks for stepping in. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Number 689, Though the Mountains May Fall. 689. Though the mountains may fall and the hills turn to dust, yet the love of the Lord will stand as a shelter for all who will call on his name, sing the praise and the glory of God. Could the Lord ever leave you could the Lord forget his love? Though a mother forsake her child, he will not abandon you. Though the 
mountains may fall and the hills turn to dust, yet the love of the Lord will stand as a shelter for all who will call on his name, sing the praise and the glory of God. Should you turn and forsake him, he will gently call your name. Should you wander away from him, he will always take you back. Though the mountains may fall and the hills turn to dust, yet the love of the Lord will stand. As a shelter for all who will call on his name, sing the praise and the glory of God.